Hello, YouTubers. Well, it's the end of the holiday season, and uh, as usual, I took a week off for the holidays and just enjoyed the weather. We actually had a, uh, a uh, warm snap down here for a week. It was getting up around the mid-70s Fahrenheit or around, uh, around 24 Celsius uh, during the days. Real nice and not too chilly at night. Um, that's why I like the southwestern uh, corner of the U.S. here. Uh, it's, it stays warm. The rest of the country, though, whew, boy, did they get hit. We had, a, we had a couple of Arctic blasts that came across. They were getting down well below freezing all the way to the Gulf Coast of Texas. So I guess I'm glad I didn't travel down there this, uh, this winter for that. <laughs> Sorry, Al. Hope you guys did okay down there. Um, it's an RV park a friend of mine has down there, Al. He, uh, he lets me stay uh, if I come down that way. Uh, but uh, RVs and sub-freezing temperatures are not a good combination. Water lines freeze. Uh, the uh, pipes in the valve system for the waste tanks can freeze and crack. And uh, boy, you don't want you don't want a sewage leak. Oh, uh, so uh, yeah, it got quite cold across the rest of the country. There was massive snowstorms in the northern part of the country. There were storms and tornadoes across uh, Texas and parts of the south. Um, it was a rough, rough December for most of the country. But down here in the southwest corner, it's been nice. T-shirt weather most days. Um, we'll get a cold snap here in the first week of January uh, where it'll get uh, chilly at night. It won't get below freezing. It won't even get uh, down close to freezing. Um, and the days will get into the low 60s, which would be, I don't know, around 20 Celsius or so. Um, so yeah, it's not too bad this, this year. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, so yeah, these uh, travel vlogs, I, I usually don't script these. I just kind of talk about what's going on and what I'm up to. And so yeah, this is the uh, dead of winter, the, the middle of the cold season here in the Northern Hemisphere. And I'm in the desert just north of Yuma. The uh, area has uh, close, close to full, close to filled up. Um, I took uh, some drone pictures yesterday. You can see the sea of RVs off into the distance there. This, this area is, we're still spaced out pretty good, but there's a lot of people here now. And the uh, bands have been getting noisy with all the inverters and, and uh, solar chargers uh, running around me, uh, but still not too bad. Uh, but it's, it's noisy. I, I'm, I'm really, I've really become kind of a hermit. I, I like to keep to myself and, and uh, I like the quiet and it's getting kind of noisy. <laughs> there's, you know, voices and engines and generators and uh, vehicles and dogs, you know, um, it's, it's, uh, it's quite noisy. But that's okay, you know, that's, that's just the way it is. Pretty soon, um, well, we get past January uh, and then all of the, the snowbirds, all of the uh, migratory folk will start heading north and it'll start to get sparser. And that's usually when I go up to, to Quartzite, the, my quiet spot up there is after the chaos. Because right now, as busy as it is here, it's crazy up around Quartzsite. There'll be a, over a million people there now uh, for the uh, January events. January's the big RV events up there, the big shows and things, and uh, yeah, big crowd. So that's, uh, that's what's going on. Um, uh, time to get back to work. My break's over. So uh, projects I've got. I've, I've been thinking this week about different things I want to do, and I've I've got a small list made up. I need to get uh, I need to get back on the true SDX project. Uh, I'm going to try uh, Manuel's fix and reload the uh, boot loader on it and see if that fixes the audio issue with uh, sideband modulation. Kind of an odd fix. He, his solution is to reload the bootloader. And then that somehow that fixed the one that he had. So, uh, hmm. I guess I can kind of see how maybe the bootloader, if it's corrupted, is not setting the hardware up right. Because a, a bootloader, it's like the BIOS on an old computer. When you turn on digital circuitry, it comes up in a random state. All right, so in, in a computing environment, Everything comes up in a random state. You have no idea what any of the hardware is doing. And the first processor code that runs initializes the hardware. And, and that's what the bootloader does. It kind of initializes all the hardware, sets everything up, and then passes control to the user's program. So perhaps a corrupted bootloader on the little radio is leaving some piece of hardware that's related to the uh, 
the uh, audio stream uh, in, a, in a bad state. I don't know. It fixed the one that he had, so we'll try that, you know. And then if that doesn't fix it, I'll uh, take the RF board out and go run through Manuel's assembly video step by step and check every single step of the assembly until I find the flaw. So that, I've got to get on that project and finish that up. Um, I've got some more 3D printing stuff I want to do. My uh, wrist-mounted micro paddles it was kind of a success. And I really, really enjoyed designing them and putting them together. Um, there's a, a, a very big level of satisfaction for me when I can imagine something and then make it real and hold it in my hand. There's, it's, it's a thrill, you know? And, and these little guys, these little micro paddles, um, they work. It was a success. I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled with the result. And, and there's just, uh, it's a maker's high, you know, when you complete a project and, and you've actually got a finished thing in your hands that's physical and it's real. And it was just a dream in your head days before, you know, there's, there's a high to that. I call it a maker's high. It's kind of like a runner's high, you know, and, and I'm sure that, uh, uh, purveyors of every skill and trade and craftsmen of all types, so sculptors, wood turners, painters, uh, engineers. When, when, you, when you take something from up here, from your imagination, and you make it real, oh, it's a thrill. I, I really enjoyed that project. And I want to do some more on those. I want to refine the, pro the paddles. I have some ideas for version 2. And I have some other 3D printing stuff I need to do. Uh, so I want to get the 3D printer out again. Um, in fact, I want to mod the 3D printer. Uh, I'm going to modify it for a direct connection to 12 volts. It's an older printer with a 12 volt system. So I'm going to modify it for a direct connection to my solar uh, battery and uh, eliminate the loss of using the inverter and then the printer's power supply to take the voltage up to 120 and then back down to 12. That's just silly. So I need to... Uh, <laughs> I actually need to print some parts for that modification and do that. And I want to make, do, do a maintenance pass on the printer too. Clean it up, lubricate everything. Um, re -true the parallelism on the uh, carriage rods because I'm noticing some stiffness at one end so they're not quite perfectly parallel anymore. You know, just maintenance. Just, just do a maintenance pass on it and get it ready for uh, running directly off 12 volts. So th there's that. Um, oh, what else did I have? Uh... I got a list around here somewhere. There's some other things I want to get going on too. So some projects to get started on. So I'm going to probably do the printer this week. I'm going to do a maintenance pass on it and uh, modify it for a 12 volt connection. And I guess I'll do a video on that. I'm going to make a couple of parts for that. So that might be useful for somebody. Um, uh, so yeah, there's that coming up. Other than that, I'm really just hibernating through the winter, waiting for the warm weather, uh, the really warm weather to come back. I, I'm not comfortable until it gets much warmer than this. And uh, yeah, another month or so. By the end of January, it should be nice. And uh, maybe I'll be heading north again. The RV is creaking and groaning a lot and uh, starting to show its age. I've got a vacuum leak to find on the engine. Uh, front vents in the dashboard don't work anymore. Everything comes out of the defroster. So those those baffles and everything are driven by vacuum. Apparently up in Kingman last summer, one of those rats that... Uh, I killed 74 kangaroo rats around the RV that summer. 74 of them. They're just crazy up there. And one of them got in there. One of them chewed a vacuum line somewhere, I think. So they didn't chew any wires. Everything electrical still works. That's good. But... Uh, I got to find that and fix it. And I want to do some modifications. Um, I want to increase my uh, solar. I'm going to add another couple hundred watts. And I want to take the propane furnace out and replace it with a diesel heater for next, uh, for next winter or maybe this summer because I'm going to be traveling up into higher elevations in the summer to get away from the monsoon storms down there around Kingman. And it could get chilly at night, so I'm going to, going to put in a diesel heater. And yeah, I'll do videos on that too. Um, somebody, I, I mentioned that somewhere and someone suggested, oh, you should keep the propane furnace. So you've got it as backup. Well, I, I don't use it. Um, in fact, I think I've used it once when I was first on the road four years ago and I haven't used it since. Uh, it gobbles up propane, just gobbles it up. If I use the propane furnace 
three nights in a row, I'm going to have to take the RV in somewhere to get the propane refilled. Uh, it just it just uses so much, and it uses so much electrical power running its blower. It'll kill the battery you know, in a couple hours. Well, three hours maybe. The diesel heaters are far more efficient um, fuel-wise. They sip fuel. Two gallons of diesel, if I ran the heater a couple hours a day, I could run it for almost two weeks. Uh, it's, it's just really, really light on fuel usage. And after the glow plug has ignited the flame and it goes back to just around on the blower, the diesel heaters draw about 1.2 amps. Um, so that's not a lot of power usage. So yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to replace the, pro, the propane furnace. And the other reason for doing that is the existing ductwork is already in place. I can feed it right into the ductwork and it'll come out the various ducts spreading the heat out through the RV and it, it'll feed some heat down to the, where the water tank is and the holding tanks are too. So if you're in sub-freezing temperatures, it'll keep your, your water lines from freezing and your, more impo most importantly, your waste tank um, system from freezing and cracking and leaking. So there's that. Uh, and I'm also going to get rid of a bunch of stuff this spring. A lot of dead weight. I have boxes and boxes of parts I've never touched that are just dead weight that I'm carrying. Um, I've got a lot of redundancy and tools, you know. I, I probably have three or four of each size of wrench back there in the toolbox. I only really need one of each, you know, so I could part and pare that, pare that all down and, and drop a lot of weight uh, because I'm, it's, it's heavy right now. I've, 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 <laughs> I've collected stuff. Uh, and when you're in an RV, you don't want to collect too much stuff because you just don't have a lot of room to store things. And really, most of what I've got stored here uh, I never used. There's things that I've been carrying since I left Fort Wayne that I have never touched. So why am I keeping them? I don't know. It's just dead weight. Lightening it up will uh, help with gas mileage. You know, so I've got to do that. That'll be when I get up to Kingman, though, when, when I'm on Jeannie and Tony's place and uh, I've got access to the extra tools in the shop that Tony has to do some of that work. So that's, that's going to be coming up. Oh, I had an antenna experiment that I want to do. Um, I need to put up a second mast for it, and I'm pretty sure it'll fail. <laughs> but I'm just curious to see if it'll, if it'll work. I might do that. Uh, and like I say, I've got a list here of, of things I've been thinking about this week to get, to get going on. So, lots of stuff to do. Um, what else? Well, I really don't know what else to say. Oh, somebody's going to ask if I'm going to Quartz Fest. The, the big uh, ham radio RV gathering up around Quartzsite towards the end of January? Maybe. Um, I'm thinking about it. If the weather, and it's a warm season so far this year, so if the weather is changing and it's really starting to warm up by then, I might go up for the last few days of Quartz Fest and then just stay up there, stay up that way. Um, otherwise, I don't know if I want to spend the fuel uh, to go up there and just to come back down here, um, 60 miles up, 60 miles back, you know, it's a chunk of fuel. And I'm really trying to save money because, uh, this summer I am uh, going to be, as soon as the monsoon storms start in Kingman, I'm going to be heading up into Nevada somewhere, uh, to get away from those storms. <laughs> uh, those of you that have followed the channel for a while know that, uh, this last summer was, was really rough. The, the, the storms were intense to the point where I actually got frightened a couple times. I, I, there were a couple of those storms where for a moment there, I wondered if um, this was it. Yeah, <laughs> if the building was about to come apart and I was about to die. It was bad. I heard stories too um, when I traveled back down to Quartzsite. I, uh, there was some of those monsoon storms that came through that area that that flipped RVs over and tore roofs off buildings. Uh, there was flooding. Uh, there was flooding in the, in the big Senator Wash down here. Um, it turned into a river with one of those storms. Uh, it was a nasty summer. And uh, once those storms start up again this coming summer, I'm getting out. I'm heading north. I'm getting going to go up along the uh, east side of the mountains where the storms are minimized and explore up there. And so I need to save my money um, for that fuel expense for that travel because that's that's going to be an expensive summer. Not just with fuel, 
uh, you know, when you're traveling, you've got other things you have to pay for. You have to, you have to pay to, uh, to use dump stations usually, or you have to use like a state park pass or buy a state park pass. There's extra expenses when you're traveling. Um, you know, and every couple of weeks or so, maybe every three or four weeks, I'll stop in an RV park overnight to use their laundry facilities and get in a nice, real long hot shower, you know, and stuff like that. So yeah, lots, lots to think about now as we, as we come into the new season. And then, uh, yeah, the year's almost over. The calendar year is almost over. The, uh, the calendar that the world follows. <clears throat> as far as I'm concerned, the year started a few days ago when the, we reached the maximum point of axial tilt and the days stopped getting shorter and started getting longer. At least that's something real, right? So in my mind, it's already the new year. The days are getting longer, more and more sun each day. And uh, pretty soon the temperatures will start trending up. So I'm looking forward to that. It seems like there was something else I was going to talk about, but I think I've probably talked long enough. I, I, I'm never comfortable doing these vlogs. It just doesn't seem like uh, eh, 16 minutes. Um, it just doesn't seem to me like it's all that interesting, but a lot of people like them. They, they like to hear what's going on with me and in, in the, tri the trip. The, uh, oh yeah, the Rat Pack down here, um, the Ham Radio group, we're, we're, we're up to, I think, over 30 members now. People that are, that are here that are radio hams that have checked into the nightly net and, and we have our, uh, our little campfires and potlucks and things. And it's a nice group down here, the, the, the Desert Wash Rat Pack. Oh, there was just an earthquake. I have an earthquake monitor um, as part of the Mate desktop. Anything over a magnitude six, it alerts me. I'm, you know, I'm down here uh, in the vicinity of the San Andreas, and uh, I, when I go north, uh, the Cascades are all along the big Pacific fault line, you know. So I kind of keep an eye on earthquakes, just out of curiosity. Uh, it seems like there was something else I was going to talk about. Well, I can't remember. Hmm. Anyway, um, yeah, I guess, uh, you know, that's what's going on. I know I threw a lot at you there, but uh, I think uh, this week I'm going to get the 3D printer back out and uh, I'm going to use it to print, print parts for its own upgrade and then uh, tear it down and do some maintenance on it, clean it up, lubricate it, retrue everything and get it all aligned. I have been really impressed. Um, I have an Anycubic i3 Mega, which is a steel frame, steel box, rigid construction clone of Prusa's i3. And it has held up really, really well. When I left Fort Wayne over four years ago, I wanted to take it with me. It's my most versatile tool. And I was worried about how it was going to hold up with uh, the road vibration, you know, because it's it's packed down there in some foam. But still, when I'm traveling with this thing, the whole thing's shaking and vibrating. I, I figured that would uh, lead to it requiring a lot of adjustment every time I needed to use it. But honestly, and surprisingly, I've only had to retrue the bed or re-level the bed once since I've been traveling. Every time that I've taken it out, I've just basically hooked it up and started printing. And it's that first layer has been fine, almost perfect. And there was one uh, one time about two years ago where I was having adhesion problems on the first layer. And yeah, I had to retrue the bread, the bed because the gap was a little bit too big. So it did eventually require readjustment, but it's held up really, really well. Uh, I just take it out, plug it in and print and <laughs> it's worked reliably every time. It's a nice, rigid construction. So I'm pretty happy with that printer. Um, ultimately, what I would like to do, which I don't know how I could do it, because it's, vans are so doggone expensive, ridiculously, ludicrously expensive, I would like to get rid of a lot of stuff, um, get a sprinter van and uh, make it livable, and get a like a casita or a small camper trailer that I could tow, that I could use to come down here in the winter season for the the long term areas. They don't let you. They don't let you stay out here unless you have at least a 10 gallon holding tank. And I think that rule's in place so people don't dump their waste, water, and sewage on the ground. Uh, 
makes sense. So that would be the ideal thing, because then I could uh, spend the summer months um, traveling around much easier if I was in a van. Uh, traveling with this thing's a nightmare, but I've talked about that before. So I'd like to do that, but I don't see how I'm going to be able to afford a van. There's just no way. But yeah, I keep that thought in the back of my mind. The other thing I've been thinking about now, I've been traveling for more than four years, and uh, there's kind of an appeal in my mind to, to, to maybe setting up a home base, you know, maybe getting a, a little spot of land up at altitude in northeastern Arizona or New Mexico somewhere, and uh, building a tiny house, you know, a, a nice strong tiny house made with cinder blocks, insulate it, and uh, run off grid. I, I could totally live off grid. I don't need to plug into the AC power. Um, no need for it. With solar, and I could build a wind generator between the two with uh, my power consumption, I'd have no problem. That's that's the secret, by the way, to the success of, of going to solar energy or something like that, is to change your habits, change your consumption. We're, we're kind of gluttonous in houses with power. It's it's so plentiful that we do things like leave cell phone chargers plugged in and, and little devices plugged in. You go through your house, you probably have all kinds of things that are sucking down a ton of power every day, and um, you don't really need them. You know, there's a lot of things that you don't really need that are convenience just for convenience' sake. And if you change your habits and reduce your power consumption to what you need, you find that a relatively moderate solar setup, maybe supplemented with a wind generator and you know, two or three hundred amp hours of, of lithium iron phosphate battery or maybe sodium ion when that battery technology comes to the market next year, safer and cheaper and better uh, for the environment because we have plenty of sodium. Sodium chloride is salt and uh, we literally have oceans of sodium. So sodium ion batteries, they're coming to market um, this next year, 2023, and keep an eye out on those. Um, they're going to be cheaper than lithium. Uh, presently, they're about 80% of the power density, so they're still better than lead acid, but uh, a whole lot safer uh, and a, a whole lot cheaper to make. So watch that technology. But uh, yeah, um, make a, have a little tiny house up there and maybe just hang out there and only come down here for the winter and, and spend the summer there. I don't know. Things like that are tickling in my mind. Um, traveling in a big RV is not as pleasant as I would like. Uh, it's, it's a lot of hassle, a lot of work, a lot of fuel. Traveling in a van, I could afford to do. Uh, it'd be a lot easier and I could explore places that I can't reach with this thing. I can't take this thing down many of the forest service roads because they're just too rutted um, or soft. In a van, those would be accessible to me. It would be fun to, uh, if I was in a van, every state that I look at on the Parks on the Air database has some parks that have never been activated. It'd be fun to make that a mission and, and go and activate parks that haven't been activated. You know, that'd be cool. So yeah, a lot of things I'm thinking about right now. Um, and we'll see how the year unfolds going forward. Okay, so yeah, I have talked enough. Uh, so that's it for this travel vlog. Happy New Year. Um, uh, and a happy upcoming New Year. Well, this will be released, I guess, by then. But uh, happy New Year to the calendar folks. And uh, happy New Year to the everybody else that doesn't follow the calendar. <laughs> well, I guess that's the minority. Um, Take care, enjoy the uh, uh, upcoming uh, warmth as we enter into the new year, and I guess we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos, and if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.